I promise you a look at the 2021 season. And I think a lot of, judging by the number of mails that I got, a lot of you were really, um, once it got to the middle of June, it was almost Midsummer's Day, uh, you really began to worry because there were very few butterflies about. And that was a big talking point this summer. We began to believe that it was gonna be a very, very poor season. But really, was it as bad as we all think? So I hope to answer that question shortly. As I said, with any insect, the weather is always a, is always a key to uh, the, what happens to our species. And this, this little, these charts just give you a quick overview. We're not gonna to linger too long on this. A quick overview of the last couple of years, because what happened last year has a big influence on this year. So in terms of last year, you remember, sorry, 2020, 2020 when the pandemic started, uh, it was a very mild winter, extremely mild winter, uh, extremely wet uh, in, in February. But then you were probably remember as soon as the pandemic struck, the sun came out, we had some very warm, um, months. We had a rather chilly July, which is a very important month for butterflies. That's when so many of our species are on the wing. Um, and you also no notice we, we had a warm um, autumn. Rainfall wise, we can see the huge peak we had. Remember all the floods back in February 20. Um, and um, we also see here, and this is important, November. November is an important month for, for butterflies. It's when everything goes into hibernation. And if it's wet and it's warm, that's a very bad combination for a lot of our species that overwinter. Uh, they suffer disease. Um, they're in and out of actually going into hibernation and the casualties can be very high. Quick summary at the bottom there, 2021. So the season started uh, at quite chilly, very um, average uh, February. Uh, and you might just remember, and this one's important, we had a bit of a heat wave in, in March. I think it was the third, the last week in March, we had record temperatures. I think it, the mercury hit 26 degrees. Even in the Yorkshire, we, we had a, ex, quite a heat wave. But then you probably remember April, May, extremely, extremely cold. And then we went to actually quite a warm summer and a very warm autumn. In terms of rainfall, well, we won't forget the rains of last May. Uh, it was extremely, one of the wettest Mays on record. All this, you can feel the effect of this. And one of the factors we, we, we do measure in all this is the flight curves. And the comment that I was getting back from you, transect walkers, were, where are all the butterflies? Well, they were just straightforward, very late. So let's just have a quick look at how late some of our species were. So I've chosen four species, the two whites, two browns, just to have a look at what happened. So the large white, you'll see uh, a big gap here. So what you see here is the amount seen on our transects. Um, and this is, these are gonna be the graphs that now appear in our an annual review published each year. Uh, this is number of insects seen on our, uh, sorry, this is actually a percentage um, of, so it's the whole of the year is 100%. And this is the percentage of the population that was seen uh, for each week of the year. So that allows you to compare one year with another year. So here we're looking at 2021 season compared with the five year average. And you see this big gap here, which is June into July. We were really quite low. 
you'll see the same with the uh, small white, similar with the ringlet, and similar with the metabran. Put this all together and you get this, which is all the species. And you see this gap here is quite huge. But then you see this peak well above. So although we had a very bad June, there was more than ample compensation for it in, um, in July. So it's a very grim start, which is the other important bit. This bit down here in uh, April or May, uh, we had some really bad weeks when we weren't able to get out and walk, but because there were no butter butterflies there to count. Uh, the June lull, which those butterfly people will know is a tradition each year. Uh, there's always a gap between the, the, the spring species and the summer species. Uh, normally it's about one week, two weeks in length. This year, I've never known it anything like it. The June null lasted the whole of June. But then you can see the catch up boom was huge. So we had three weeks well below and then three weeks well above. So these are our species trends. And we're looking at the different, different different species groups in a little bit more detail. And you see over in the table, the uh, number of transects where the species go up, there's a number of transects where they're kind of in the middle, neither yes, neither no, and the number that are going down. Going down. And this is done by count. So this is the average of all the, all the transects which actually had that species present. Uh, next over, you'll see uh, what happened the previous year and over here, just to add a little bit of uh, perspective to it, the national trends. So let's look at a little bit more detail at the skippers, our golden skippers, as we call them, the, 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 uh, the large, the small, and the Essex. Bad news for uh, 2021, uh, they were almost universally down in count, and you can see although it's less obvious on the uh, um, um, than some species, um, that the number of transects is slightly down, but you can see in the counts, they are quite a bit down. So what this tells you is there's quite a lot of variation. And you saw that sheet that uh, um, Catherine had, lots of red and lots of green. Do apologize, it's a bit jarring on the eyes. But it gives you an idea of there's a lot of variation. Any biological um, uh, creature has a lot of variation. Habitats vary because this is habitats throughout the whole of Yorkshire. So you'll have heaths, you'll have dry limestone, chalk, chalk grasslands on steep slopes. You'll have uh, uh, Vale of York. Um, uh, land near the river, which floods on a regular basis. So it's a huge variety of habitats here. So you do have to expect a good do, deal of variation, which is why we need as many transects as we have, is to figure out patterns that are going on. So the skippers are most definitely down, but worse than that, if you look at the short term and the long term change, they're also well down. Uh, there's definitely uh, they're on the down. And if you look over in Europe, it's a similar situation to an extent that even small skipper uh, in Holland is now almost absent, but it's been re replaced by Essex skipper. So a good reason to monitor and try and figure out Essex skippers and small skippers, which is very difficult, is we could be missing significant trends if we don't measure those two species. Dingy skipper, obviously it's not so, such a common species. It's been slightly uh, down this year, up last year in the, in the good spring. Um, and um, overall, it's only a small change, slightly down. Now, probably some of the highlights of this year is the orange tip and the brimstone. Now, even though their flight periods were very, very poor, um, 
the reason we're able to assess that they actually did quite well is because we only walk, the Pollard walk is only walked in good conditions. So we actually get a realistic assessment of a species, regardless of whether the weather was really bad or poor. Um, and the results of that is you can see orange tip and brimstone both had good years, which was quite a surprise. You also see uh, the long term on brimstone is definitely definitely benefiting from the spread of its of its host plant, which you know the host plant, which is the buckthorn, is spreading north. We're also planting it um, in Yorkshire, um, and the orange tip is most definitely short-term, having a bit of a boom time. Now, the green vein white is an interesting one. This is, uh, there's a number of species that, that prefer damp conditions. And if you're familiar with the whites, uh, you generally find green vein white likes shade, um, lusher grass, uh, where crucifer is more likely to grow, um, and is much more damp, damp shady white you can almost tell as soon as you walk into a in near trees green vein white tends to become the the major species uh, again not much change uh, slightly down and uh, we're thinking the reason for that is probably the drought of last year which is quite distinct if you remember 2020 the spring the heat the heat wave in particularly may by the end of may the grasses were looking yellow, the, uh, the herbs were looking quite dried up. And we think there's, there was quite a bit of mortality and lots of species suffered as a result, especially the damp loving species. And we'll see that later in the figures that the other damp lovers, lovers have also suffered. The two whites, although last year, 20, 2020, they were both up in the good summer, this year they really didn't do well. There is less migration. Both these species do migrate and they will come over from the continent. Uh, but the early spring weather, I think, really did, did them in quite a lot. In the longer term, um, they're both not faring too well with, uh, with uh, global warming in the longer term. In the shorter term, five-year term, they're actually doing quite well. Uh, I think because of the series of wet, wet summers, now, I know this summer on and off is quite wet, uh, but it's a cold spring, I think, which had the overriding factors. They were short on time. Usually, small whites would get three generations. They really struggled to get the third generation. Small tortoiseshells is a really interesting one in Yorkshire because we've had two years now of boom. And I mean, a real boom uh, to the fact that it's now uh, coming out at third or fourth most common species on most, most transects. Uh, overall, the long term over the since 1990 is well down. And still in the south of England, it's doing incredibly poorly. But in the north, it's having a boom. It's the opposite for the red apple, which this year had a cracking um, um, uh, summer in the south of England, but a poor one in Yorkshire. I think again, it's migration. Uh, the weather this 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 year has not been conducive to migration. I guess the big the big highlight really of the year is our vanessids. So we're talking about the comma, the peacock, and the red admiral painted ladies all had a really diabolical bad season. Comma now has had two really bad years um, and it seems to be still on the way down. Um, Peacock this year was poor, Red Admiral, um, and all these are having consecutive bad years. Again, we're not having those sun, we're not having, the population of all these species tend to be supplemented by migrants coming in from the continent. Moving on to the uh, fritillaries, the large fritillaries, which is a good news story for uh, Yorkshire. Um, we've seen some, considering they only appeared in 2016 in about two locations, uh, they've become highly, highly mobile species spreading through the 
county, particularly 2019, where it appeared almost in any woodland in Yorkshire could see silver washed. Um, and they were obviously in an explorative phase. We had very large numbers uh, occur in a couple of locations and they spread and settled. And they kind of congregated in a few key areas. So for example, uh, the transect that I walk, which is Bishop Wood, which is Selby, um, for five, five full weeks of this summer, Silver Wash Fertility was the commonest butterfly on the transect, which I've never experienced before. Normal counts would be up near 100 for each time I walked it. Um, who would have thought uh, a southern species would suddenly become a very common species, at least in, in my local area? It's also present in Bramham, the woodlands around Bramham on the limestone ridge, also in Newtondale, that's the vale up from Pickering. Uh, there's also colonies near Ripon on the Skell and the Laver, uh, where it's become established. Um, and other, other bits, you can see it almost anywhere. And your transect results tend to confirm that it can pop up just about anywhere. It's obviously still in its in its explorative phase of its of its uh, my, you know spread into. Um, this is really the first time it's arrived in Yorkshire in force since the 19th century. So we have to go back to the warm spells of the end of the 19th century to find anything equivalent. Dark green fertility is also behaving in a, in a similar way. It's spreading rapidly. You can see it in all kinds of places. Uh, the populations are up. Uh, you see the long-term trends here really are positive. They're really on the up. Um, they're spreading up the limestone ridge presently. Um, and there, I think they should reach Ripon, I think probably this next year. Um, obviously, it's always been established on the Yorkshire Dales, on the limestone sites there, uh, and similar sites on the Yorkshire Moors. But this year, it, I'm glad to report, uh, it's made it onto uh, Fodden Chalk Bank, one of our new um, transects this year, and it's in very good numbers. I'm, I'm staggered at it, uh, what, what Kerry has been seeing over in Fodden. Um, moving on to the Lysenids, they had a pretty poor year, and one in particular had a diabolical year. Uh, the holly blue, I think, is absolutely hit the bottom to the fact that this last, that you know, they have two generations in a year. The second generation was the first time we actually saw some increasing numbers. So, predictions for next year. Hopefully, we'll see an improvement. If you look at the long-term figure, 300% rise, they're definitely being driven by global warming, um, but the short term, it's down. Now, it suffers with a parasite, which is a, uh, and it goes through cycles, around about four to five year cycle. Uh, and we think we've hit the bottom, so hopefully it's now going up. But the blues in particular have had a bad time, uh, and the small copper, not good. We haven't had a good summer. Basically with the blues and, and the small copper, they need a, a good summer. That's when they really proliferate. Uh, they can get an extra generation in. Small copper will do three generations easily. Um, they're not getting the opportunities with the summers we've had. Brian Argus is an interesting one. It's only up in the short term and it was up this year. And the Northern Brown Argus had an exceptional year this year. Now, there's, there's a regional effect here because the northwest of the county had a much better summer than us people down, our, these flat line, flatlanders like me down in the Vale of York. Um, actually, the Yorkshire Dales had a cracking summer. And I think that shows in that figure there. Marble White. Well, now we have for the first time really quite good monitoring with the new sites on the on the wolds and we're beginning to see that it's actually on the increase and in the long term it's on the increase 
Short term, it can suffer with, with, uh, with drought. And that's, I think, reflected in that figure there. It's slightly down with the drought. Uh, the speckled, whoops, sorry. The speckled wood is, um, had a very bad year. As you can see, 16 of the transects were down, only three of them were up. So it's a very clear, clear, uh, clear cut picture with the speckled wood. Uh, and similarly with the ringlet, again, 13 down, eight up, nine in the middle, most definitely down. And ringlet obviously contributes because it's a very common species, contributes a huge amount to the overall figures. So, um, um, the, the reason we think these are down is the same reason for as the uh, green vein white. Both speckled woods ringlets are tend to be, you find them in, in uh, coarser grasses, shadier areas, um, the damp lovers. Um, and I think with the drought of 2020, the May drought, they're still really recovering from that drought. In contrast, the meadow browns and the gatekeepers and the small heath, particularly the small heath, have had good years. And you would say small heath in particular has had a series of really quite good years. It's definitely on, on the up. Overall, although it's, you can say it's a pretty average year, 12 species up, 15 species down. So it's still more down than up. Overall, we are 3% down compared with the five year average. But as you saw those, the graph of the different years, actually this year, if you compared it say with 2016 and the previous five years, actually there's, there's a significant increase. Our damp shade lovers have have not really bounced back yet, but I think next year they probably will. And what will help them bounce back is this November of this year was, was uh, uh, quite dry. So we're kind of expecting that mortality uh, over, the, over the winter will actually be quite, quite good. So that's the picture and let's just tie it together now into a simpler one. And just go through the, the key the key the key drivers in this whole butterfly process and just, just think about what's been going on. So we've had a series of good years. The 2017-2019 period was one of the best periods since the mid-90s. And you have to go back to the 90, mid 70s to find anything close to that peak. The reason obviously is we've had some cracking temperatures. Uh, 17 to 19, or 18 and 19, were particularly good butterfly summers. It's now slowed, but not hugely, even with a, a year like last year, which most of us will remember that June, the June with no butterflies. The other key factor we looked at is the 2020 drought that has had a significant effect on those that prefer uh, the damper conditions. Uh, yet yeah, we've looked at the record-breaking spring 2020. That was partly responsible for the boom in the brimstones and the orange tips. Obviously, they're at the very best uh, last in the 2020. They really did enjoy those uh, uh, those temperatures that we had at the beginning of lockdown. We probably all will remember the beginning of lockdown how good it was. And I also remember my buckthorn plants in my garden were completely stripped. Uh, right down to almost no leaves by um, brimstones until the until the blue tits found that they had a ready source of food um, and um, um, I don't know how many made it through um, but obviously you know butterflies and moths are a big contributor to bird life uh, and I think one of the th key things with birds this year is the lack of caterpillars during the crucial chick period of late May into June. The birds are really gonna suffer because of the shortage of caterpillars. So the last two years, we've had two fairly warm 
cloudy uh, and all of us will remember how difficult it was this year i mean overall transit walking this year has been a bit of a nightmare we've heard about the cold and the uh, uh the cold spring of april into may but you probably all remember uh june july uh into august was how often each day uh you wake you get up the sun's out but by 10 o'clock when you're getting ready to go out to do your transect walk uh the convective cloud bubbles up uh and it promptly goes really dark an hour later it starts to drizzle but never actually does anything so you hang around hoping uh at which point around about three o'clock when there's not another still another opportunity to have a walk before the end of the transect day um the sun then the, the sun then comes out and there's corking evening sun and that seemed to be the pattern of our summer this this year and an increasing pattern these last two years of damp summers and the convective cloud it's actually quite difficult to get a good clear sunny spell that you can predict when you're going to transect walk So obviously we the extremely poor spring of 2021, we've covered two, also the, another key factor, two good late summers, um, which should really help the uh, the venesids, the the, over, the hibernating species, the tortoiseshells, the peacocks. And so far this year, after a very warm autumn last year, the, the numbers are quite good. Peacock numbers are not good because they had such a poor last year, but tortoise shells there seem to be in abundance. Um, brimstone's quite good. Contributing to that, uh, also we've had two dryish Novembers. Even if they had been a little warm, they've been dry. That's been crucial for our overwintering ones. And lots of our species spend their autumn as caterpillars or eggs. The weather is this certainly this year has prevented uh, lots lots of migration. Hence, the red admiral has really suffered, not in the south of England but in the north of England. Conclusions: 2017, 2019, best year since the mid 90s. 2021, slightly down on the five-year average, but still a good year. Prospects. Although low numbers of hibernators went into uh, uh, th into the autumn, I think the, the survival will be good because we've had no, like we had last year with the heat wave in March when lots of our uh, hibernators came out of hibernation and became, became active. They then had to suffer two months of extreme cold, wet, et cetera. And I think one of the big factors for, for their survival is they just didn't have enough, they just expended too much energy in March and uh, you know, they just didn't make it through to breed. And, I, and the, the dry November should help our brands. So I'm hopeful about this year, um, but the proof will be in the eating. Holly Blue, we're hoping that will hit the bottom and start to see improvements. Um, and the whites did stage a, a late recovery last year. Hopefully they'll make a better recover this, this year. And the blues, the lysenids, the small copper, et cetera, it really does need a, a good summer to uh, see things improve. And there are a little, a bit of controversy for you because I like a little bit of controversy. Um, what will be the next invading species? So I know I've spent a little bit of time this last summer, actually, uh, and you might have joined um, Dennis Dell for his talk on Purple Emperor. Um, it's getting close, chaps, and we're on the front line very much, especially those transects in the south of the county. Um, the, the emperor's coming, and I saw quite a few, literally five miles from the Yorkshire border. Uh, certainly in a number of places they're now becoming very numerous 
Um, I'm talking about Sherwood Forest uh, and uh, surrounding area is proving very, very good habitat for the Purple Emperor. It has been, only by rumour, it has been seen in Yorkshire, but we have had no definite confirmations. But areas we're looking for it are areas like Maltby Low Common, which is a cracking site full of sallow. Um, and that's what they really need is a good abundance of sallow bushes, which are incredibly common in um, uh, Yorkshire. And it's good to report that um, the Forestry Commission now used to treat sallow bushes as weeds because they always overgrew um, woodland rides. They're actually leaving them or coppicing them so they recover. So there's good news that they have habitat and they're, they're not far away. So once all this data is crunched, as you've seen by uh, Catherine, it then forms the basis of our site monitoring. And up on the screen at the moment is Bishop Wood, which is actually my transect. So I've done about 60 of these reports this year. Um, if your site has had more than one year's data, you can go and look at your data on the website. So you just go under recording uh, transit reports and you should find it. And what you'll see basically is the route we walk, the characteristics and habitats of the site, uh, the different species and roughly whereabouts they occur, the sections that make up a transect. As you know, transects are divided into a number of sections, usually by habitat or some other indicator. And this sheet here shows you where each of the species occurs in each of the transects. So you get a much more better feel of what's what on your transect from that chart. Um, over here, you'll see the analysis. And what I do here is compare your uh, data against the Yorkshire averages. So you begin to get a feel how you compare against. So you begin to see here typical, the skippers are down, which is typical, of course, of what we've seen. The brimstone is up, dingy is down, all typical, large white down, small white up, uh, orange tip up, which we've we looked at before, which is common throughout York. Um, small tortoiseshell, the boom continues. Um, and uh, silver wash artillery, um, unbelievable numbers that we saw there. I think we got in total for the whole year, 350 insects we counted. Um, speckled woods are actually up. It is a very wet site and it was flooded um, this last spring. That might have helped the speckled wood survive, unlike other areas. Uh, meadow Brown's up, ringlet slightly up, and the total, interestingly, even with the weather we had last year, the totals are up. And I can take you on to other um, uh, sites. I'm not going to. I'm going to stop at this point, and um, I'll just go back. I'm going to open it up now to to our uh, new transect uh, walkers and give them a chance because this meeting should really be about you not about us what we do etc it should be about you it's a it, it's for you to contribute and to share and to make comment uh hope you've enjoyed that presentation on the 2021 figures and i'd like to now just look at some of the new transects so I'm just going to come out of out of there and excuse me while I just get my browser to go.
And let's look at recording, transact reports. And I'm going to look first at uh, an interesting one. It's new. Um, I think we have, I think we have the walkers with us. Let's just give me a second. Or on quarry. Tiny postage stamp sized um, reserve on the Yorkshire Wolds. It's walked by Victoria Scone and Martin Phillips. I think, I'm afraid I haven't had a chance to see who's with us and who's not with us, but I think Martin was with us at one point. Um, he might like to just butt in and comment on what I'm going to say. Um, but uh, this is a new site, altogether new site. Um, it's an old quarry, as you may be aware. Um, it's, very, it's been very much studied over the years. Martin Phillips has always, well, for a lot of years, has walked the site, studied the site, uh, and has, in a large way, directed operations of Yorkshire Wildlife Trust who maintain it. Um, it's famous for its dingy skipper. And um, each few years, I think it's on a three year cycle, a new scrape is made roughly where my pointer is, um, scraping back the chalk to produce new habitat. And if you look at the counts for dingy sp skipper, then you'll begin to see um, this, is, this year's figures. If you look here, 72.